I should warn you, you're about to see a shark in three, two, one. Some sharks are apex predators, but most have far more in common with this chain cat shark than they do with a great white. There are 560 species of shark currently known to science, and more than half of them are under three feet in length. Less like Jaws, more like Oz. But what is a shark? Why do we fear them? Or at least the big ones. And why are they among the most ecologically significant animals in the deep blue sea? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. It's a well-established fact that modern sharks have been swimming in the world's oceans for over 200 million years, and shark-like chondrichthyans have existed in the fossil record for over 400 million years. In their time on this planet, sharks have attained a breathtaking level of diversity in size, shape, and behavior, from the 8-inch long dwarf lantern shark with a bioluminescent belly to the 40-foot-long whale shark that reaches 11 tons on a diet of plankton. They range from the somewhat odd to the what the actual hell happened here. Some species scavenge reindeer carcasses in the Arctic, while other hunt fish by using their tail as a whip. And then of course, there is the most famous shark on the planet, the Great White, responsible for more human fatalities than any other species, with the tiger shark and bull shark coming in second and third place. Naturally, and understandably, these three sharks garner the most media attention. Sharks don't attack and kill simply for the pleasure of violence and bloodshed. That's more of a human thing. When a shark attack takes place, it's usually a case of mistaken identity, as our comparatively low fat content makes the human body much less palatable than a seal. If sharks wanted to eat us, the numbers would show it. But in 2023, there were 69 unprovoked shark attacks worldwide, and only 10 were fatal. The world is made aware when shark attacks happen simply because of how rare and unusual they are. Now here are some things more likely to kill you than a shark. Lightning. A snake bite. Can you bite me so I get more views? Home improvement. The activity, not the show. Although probably the show. A dog. And ironically, driving to the beach. And just to be fair, here's a list of things that are less likely to kill you than a shark. The dune popcorn bucket. Putting on a hat that you accidentally filled with lava. A butterfly that hates you and knows jujitsu. My dog, specifically. The blue bronco at the Denver airport. It only killed once. And autoerotic asphyxiation. Just kidding, that kills four times as many people every year as sharks do. You're welcome. The public perception of sharks has seen a positive shift in recent decades. People know the statistics, and surfers still be surfing. This shift is thanks in no small part to advances in underwater cinematography. Documentaries, while still occasionally sensationalized, started showing us a more realistic view of sharks, shark attacks, and shark conservation. Even more powerful is the outreach accomplished by aquariums and nonprofit organizations like the Seco Science Center in Rye, New Hampshire. That's where these chain cat sharks live, and it's where I went to summer camp for most summers of my childhood. It's kind of why I'm like this. The point is, our relationship with sharks is better, but it is still far from ideal. Even with increased regulations against shark fishing and an 80% decrease in demand for shark fin soup, annual shark mortality due to fishing has gone up from 76 million in 2012 to over 80 million in 2019. And roughly 25 million of those dead sharks are species threatened with extinction. So what? As I mentioned in the beginning, sharks are often the apex predators of their respective ecosystem. And just like apex predators on land, they regulate prey populations, weed out the weak and the sick, and maintain a balanced food web. Obviously, we don't know exactly what will happen if sharks continue to disappear from our planet, but it won't be good. So do we really want to find out? As legendary marine biologist Sylvia Earle once said, sharks are beautiful animals. 
And if you're lucky enough to see lots of them, that means you're in a healthy ocean. You should be afraid if you're in the ocean and you don't see sharks. I've decided that spring and summer of this year is going to be shark season on Miller's Wildlife. From now until September, we're going to look at every major branch on the shark tree of life. Every order and every major family. We'll start next week with one of the most ancient and absurd looking shark families on the planet, the frilled sharks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know down in the comment section. Also, comment what your favorite shark is and why. Like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, follow me on all the social media trash, and I'll see you next week. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never, ever stop evolving. Unless you're a shark. Then you're fine. You don't have to evolve anymore. You're doing good. Bye-bye. <clears throat>